Hello, welcome to the second session on experimental analysis and engineering. In this part, we learn how to use the scientific method of hypothesis testing to arrive at inter inferences on the experimental data. What is the scientific method? It is a systematic way to arrive at answers to questions. It has been devised so as to minimize human bias towards the outcome. There are four major steps in the method and the method itself is a cyclic process. The first is the characterization or observations by careful experiments. All the analysis that we have done so far, that is confidence intervals, fitting and inferences are part of this block which we call as observation. We had listed down some questions based on our observations. We are going to seek answers to those questions now. To begin, we start to guess answers. Based on our prior knowledge, intuition or simply out of the box. These guess answers are called as hypothesis. How do we know if the answer is right? We have to make a prediction of something else which has the same underlying cause. That is, if the hypothesis is true, not only is the observation true, but something else also must be true. Prediction that way is like an observation, only that it has not yet been observed. The next step is to test if the prediction is true. If the prediction is false, then the hypothesis fails, meaning we have not got the right answer. Remember, hypothesis was a guess answer to the question. And if the test fails, it means the answer is not right. However, if the prediction is true, then we have some confidence in the hypothesis because it explains at least two things. That is, it explains the observation and it explains also the prediction. Let us illustrate this by a simple day-to-day -day example. Consider a case of display failure. The situation is a daily affair. We come to our office and switch on the computer and its monitor. We notice that the computer monitor display is blank. The question is, why is it blank? Our first hypothesis is that there is a general power failure. One of the predictions of this can be that all powered equipments should be down. Notice that power failure is the cause for both the observation, which is a monitor is blank, as well as all equipments are down. That is the hypothesis is the basis for both the observation as well as the prediction. What this can be checked can be done to check our prediction. It is simple. We switch on all the other equipment in the room. Let us say that we find some are working and some are not. That means our hypothesis of general power failure is false and has to be rejected. Hypothesis can fail and most often they do. We have to keep trying. That is why the scientific method is a cyclic process. Let us try a second hypothesis. We know that in large buildings, there are three phases of electrical supply. Each phase supplies to a set of equipments. Based on this knowledge, we guess, which is our second hypothesis, that at least one phase is down. If this were true, what else can we predict that has the same cause? It's simple. All powered equipments connected to that phase must be down. The test is quite simple. Switch on the equipment phase by phase. 
Let us say we observe that all the equipments connected to the same phase of the monitor are all down. And those connected to other phases are up. This means that our hypothesis is not false. It could be true. Why is it that we are not certain about our hypothesis? Because there could be other reasons apart from phase failure of why the monitor is blank. <clears throat> this requires further investigation, meaning we have to go back and come up with other hypotheses. So you see that the uh, scientific method is a cyclic process. No matter whether you get true or false outcomes, you have to keep trying alternate hypothesis or other predictions for the same hypothesis. Is there an end to this? We don't know because tomorrow someone may come up with a prediction that falsifies the currently accepted hypothesis. This, you know, has happened throughout the evolution of science. We thought Newtonian physics explains everything we see. Then we had general relativity needed to explain bending of light under gravity. And then we had quantum effects at the atomistic length scales and lower. So each hypothesis is true only to within some limited scope. How do we use scientific methodology in experimental analysis? The steps are exactly the same. We just have to identify what they correspond to. The starting point is the graphical plot we had at the end of the last part of the session. We notice that there are significant deviations from either theory or previous experiments given by the empirical line. We listed out specific questions about the deviation. Now we have to come up with answers. These answers are precisely guess answers are our hypothesis. For this, we must know something about the system behavior from literature. We identify possible physical phenomena that may be occurring in this system. Then we use our knowledge from textbook, journals, or other uh, references where similar systems have been described. Following this, we have to come up with predictions that can be tested. We can repeat the uh, cycle of hypothesis and prediction testing as discussed earlier. Let us illustrate this with an example. Consider the problem of a sphere dropped in a fluid and we determine the time it takes to reach the bottom. After several measurements, we observe that after several measurements, we observe that the average time is 10 seconds with an uncertainty of two seconds. From theory, if we calculate the inertial time, given by square root of 2L by G, it only, it's only 5.5 plus or minus 0.1 seconds. This means that the observed time is significantly higher than expected. Why is it significantly higher? Because this value at most can be between 8 and 12, whereas this is near 5, that is 5, 4.9 to 5.1. So it is beyond the confidence intervals that this value is higher than this. And we say that this value is significantly higher than this value. We can now pose a question, why is the sphere moving slowly than what is expected? Based on our knowledge of solid motion through a fluid, we can come up with some hypothesis. These could be that the fluid drag is important and cannot be neglected. There is a human error. And 
steady state has not been reached. Let us inspect each one of these claims with a prediction. Let us pursue the first hypothesis to check its validity. The hypothesis is that the fluid exerts a viscous drag that cannot be neglected. One obvious prediction is that the sphere will now have a balance of forces and therefore will move at a constant velocity. Instead of accelerating body that we had expected in the first place, we now have something which is moving at a constant velocity. The total time must be given by L by ut, where ut is the terminal velocity. Let us say that this calculation yields a value of the viscous settling time Tv to be 20.0 plus minus 0.1 seconds. What do we infer from this? That the hypothesis is only partially successful. It did explain the slowing down, However, this is too slow. The viscous time is significantly higher than the observed time. Notice the confidence interval. Here it is 0.1 seconds and here it is two seconds. So at most this could be around 19.9 and this is at most uh, 12. So this is significantly higher than what is measured. So we have to try other hypotheses. The second hypothesis we had was that the difference is because of a human error. The obvious prediction would be that another person would get it right. This can be done, but there is no time to revisit. And possibly we have taken sufficient care to ensure that our confidence interval that we got is correct about the value we got of 10. Also, this is a vague hypothesis because it does not specifically indicate what kind of human error it could be. If we knew, knew that error, we can specifically devise a prediction to avoid it. So we should avoid such vague hypothesis. The last hypothesis we had up our sleeves is that steady state has not been reached. This is a very common uh, hypothesis to see among students who uh, look at experimental data first. There is nothing wrong with it per se. For that matter, there is nothing wrong with any hypothesis that can be tested. The problem is that some students leave it at that without taking the next step of predicting and testing. Let us say, let us see what, this can, what can be done in this particular case. We need to see what is the meaning of unsteady. It can mean that the sphere is still accelerating. It has not attained the terminal velocity. The prediction is that both inertial and viscous forces are important. The solution to this can be obtained numerically from uh, unsteady equations of motion of this sphere. Let us say the outcome of this calculation yields 11.4 plus or minus 1.1 seconds. Now this prediction is within the observed range of our actual measurement. Therefore, we can say that the hypothesis could be true. Again, we insist that the hypothesis is only possibly correct because there may be other reasons for the slowing down. We may find that using another sphere or a different liquid, this hypothesis also fails. We should keep open minds and uh, be ready to face a challenge when our prediction fails. To conclude this part, we learned about the scientific method and how it reduces human bias. Hypothesis forms the underlying cause for both observation and prediction. Scientific method is a cyclic process of predictions and testing. We saw two illustrations of one of a display failure and that 
and second of a settling time of a sphere in a fluid. We saw how we could use the scientific method to understand experimental observations. The broad conclusion is that we need reliable experimental data with some confidence intervals to be able to arrive at a scientific understanding of the phenomena behind it. Thank you for listening.